Welcome everybody to the finals of Stream League number two sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com. We are in for a incredible, incredible matchup between Christoph Prinz and Crows. We've covered Christoph Prinz and Crows throughout the tournament um, and it's going to be an amazing match. I cannot wait for you to watch these players play. What do you think about it, Cobra Go Blue? Hours of battles, several of the best personalities and players in the game clashing together comes down to Demir Control versus Sultai Ultimatum. And what do I think of this? I actually, for the first time that I have ever casted a tournament, love both decks in the finals. So I am excited to see a battle of two of my favorite Goliaths. One will stand and one will fall. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right. So we see here on Crow's side against Christoph Prince here. Christoph Prince being on the play starts out with a Temple of My Lady. Answered by a Temple of Deceit. Deceiving, My Lady. This hand looks perfectly acceptable. Uh, Elspeth's Nightmare. Saw it coming. Behold the Multiverse. Negate. The only real, like, do you foretell something there, but I think that we're thinking that we would negate a Cultivate if we see one, and Prince buying Yori and playing around, potentially that. I find myself torn on when to foretell. Yeah, I, I think uh, for me, I would foretell, uh, I would feel comfortable foretelling if I was on four mana, especially with something like Saw It Coming, where it's actually five mana to use... Five mana total for Salt coming. Um, if you um, if you foretell it and then cast it, it's five mana total. But so on turn three, I just tend to not foretell and exa do exactly what Crows did and just keep it in hand mm -hmm. and then just cast it for three mana. Especially on the draw. On the draw, it seems to always... Oh, wow. Binding the Old Gods. Strictly a four mana ramp spell in this matchup. Not a lot of things to target. Do now, you counter four mana ramp? Uh, I don't know. Um, it does. It does give K Prins a blue mana that they don't. That is true. Have. There is. It also keeps Elspeth's Nightmare from hitting the battlefield the following turn. If that's what Crows was thinking about doing, because Yorian can blink the uh, Binding the Old God, so you'd also have to have mana available to counter Yorian. Yeah, very very interesting gameplay here, uh, and then we're we're seeing the best of the best here. Um, of of, uh, of crows and K Prince here. Huh. And it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of huh. decisions they make. I can't believe he did that anyway. But I guess Yorian isn't coming down because there isn't blue mana. Never mind. That was a uh, a little factor that's pretty important that I uh, overlooked. Right. Not only did they need one blue mana, they need two blue mana. That might that might have gone into Crows' decision not to counter that is that they need a second blue anyway to cast the Yorian. Mm hmm One emergent ultimatum down, and we get a hand reveal. What do you think of this hand? Vorinclex, <laughs> Yorion, Heartless Act, Shadow's Verdict. Nice one. And uh, the another emergent ultimatum here. Um, What do I think when I see that hand? I think it's stacked. That's exactly the word I can think of right now. Just completely stacked. Um, Although Shadow's mm -hmm. Verdict isn't going to have much text in this matchup, but every single other card is pretty good here. This is an interesting counter on Binding. The second Elspeth's Nightmare gets to take the other Emergent Ultimatum. Now, you needed answers to these creatures, but Heartless Act comes right off the top of the deck. You can expect your deck to provide that. At this point, What's Crows, Crow's gonna is do it? pulling... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh? No way. Nah, it can't be. No way. It can't be. No. Hard cast. Oh. Wait. Uh, uh, we did it. We talked about the content creation value. We, yes. We talk about content value. This is the finals going for supreme content here. Wow. Right into a Vorinclex that gets to resolve smash for six, but you know, you have the heartless act to solve the, solve that issue. And now the shark, the sky is going to fill with those thirsty sharks. <laughs> I think I would heartless act the thing rather than uh, do that because you can't 
rather than play the Soul Shatter, because you can't Soul Shatter an 8-8 Hexproof token. That is very true. Does a f But let me ask you something. Does a Flying Shark get thirsty? <laughs> Does a Flying Shark get thirsty? I, th I would think so, since it's so far away from the water. Flies in the so air. used to being in yeah it lives in salt water its whole life now it's flying around in the air it's it, it needs to hydrate i think it would actually get thirsty so do you think its diet would change rather than meat things to more water-filled things like you know i don't know a yorian well per se if cat if cats can drive a chariot sharks can get thirsty in the sky that's what i'm pretty certain of that's what the developers were thinking about actually when they created the cards for sure so a Sika's chariot on the stack is I mean, it's a pretty, it's a decent card, and there isn't a clean answer here, but do you use a premium counter, a hit anything counter, like saw it coming on an Asika's Chariot in this spot? It's actually an interesting decision. Huh. And there it is. I mean, it, there it, are benefits, no... it benefits Crows to use this here. Because it guarantees the three three shark as well, and that puts a four turn clock on on the on two K Prince here. It makes it makes uh, crows be able to ask the questions, and K Prince having to come up with answers really quick here. Of course, we see the we see the hand. Shadow's verdict is probably going to solve that problem ahead of time. This is a huge window. Like ultimatum off the top resolves. Pure best of sea god off the top resolves. What's it going to be? Shadow's Verdict, and we have two mana available on the side of k Prince here. Heartless Axe still an option. Of course, crawling... I And I like this. I like reaching for Castle Vantress over the Crawling Barons because we need to find that counterspell. Every good Blue Mage knows that the world is just a warmer place when you have that counterspell in your hand. Wow, That's electing sweet, not sweet to counter. use the Castle Vantress and draws the counterspell off the top. That that that's what it takes to be a control mage <laughs> in the modern world. You you would know CGB. Are there <laughs> is there anything else more satisfying than not using Castle Vantress, knowing you need a counterspell and then just drawing it? Um, this sounds like a trick question. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> not. Behold, the multiverse getting to resolve there. Omen of the Sea getting to resolve. These things matter because you do need multiple cards now to work your way through Saw It Coming, and these these spells provide it. So maybe Prince not as far out of this as it looked not that long ago, just a flurry here of draw spells. And now we're going to see, I mean, a, a Crows drew the counterspell basically just in time here to be able to shut the Yorian off from being able to accrue so much card advantage and put a 4-5 flyer on board. But honestly, it's a big deal that these omens hit the battlefield because without them, Sad Yorian isn't a must counter threat. With them, countering Yorian becomes a priority. Right. That's a that means that the next card is more difficult to counter. And even if Yorian does get countered, you're now free to sacrifice these omens and scry with them since there's only one Yorian in the deck and try to keep up with that castle finding getting ahead of the counter spells. And we see letting Yorian resolve. Right. I'm super surprised at that actually. I, I am as well. I guess that this saw it coming is reserved for ultimatum now that um, Crows has just decided that we need to win a much bigger counter fight down the, down the line. Letting these omens re-trigger, though, it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Uh, Crows is probably to going to... Go ahead. Crows is probably going to use some mana to use Castle Vantress and try to dig to multiple counter spells and use the cheap Heartless Act to deal with the Orion. And now it's a race to who can get like who can have more who can have more counters versus more must resolve cards. And I think if I had to make that choice here, I make that distinction, I would go with Crows because of this hard cast Shark Typhoon here. It, even even if something gets countered or someone if he loses a counter spell war, he's still gonna have so many sharks to deal with on the on this side of the board. That Graven lore is uh, is also an appetizing way to dig to counter spells. The the amount of scrying and drawing that that card provides, I found it almost like a tutor with two extra cards thrown in. Right, it's it's basically dig through time. 
being able to look at like maximum five scry five draw three i mean that's basically dig through dig through time for more mana right in indeed i so crows is doing something here you saw checking the bottom of the library looking at the cards that have already been scribed to the bottom deciding whether or not to play a fable passage most likely and um if if we see like the pathway instead that's why because we don't want to shuffle those cards back in and risk drawing them because we activated the passage it's something not nearly enough people do and especially since he knows they're all lands looking at the bottom of the library you don't want to draw any more lands at this point in the game you already have enough i, mean, I think all crows might want to see here is just a second counter spell negate another another sought coming something like that maybe the stainful stroke yep Prince keeping one for the top, and as as long the long the, as long as each player plays uh, land drops, it makes mystical dispute less and less good. I'm curious if this all runs epiphany is allowed to resolve because I've said it before the card is only as good, for the most part, as what you can do with your mana after you untap after playing it, and right now there aren't a ton of threats. So we see hitting resolve and still holding saw it coming for the future. Yep, that's how we know for a fact that uh, that Crows is just saving this card for the real, real, uh, the real bomb in Ultimatum, and it also um, it also means that you were right about that with the Fabled Passage. We see Crows moving it all the way to the left side of his hand, saying, "I'm not going to play this." An answer to the Shark Typhoon has been found. I am very curious if Crows will defend the Shark Typhoon. And we see reaching for Graven Lore because Crows doesn't want to make that decision until we see what the three cards come from the Graven Lore and what they are. Now, this is a second Crawling Baron wow. here. Wow. Wow, resolves. I'm super surprised at that, too. I think. I'm not. I, I'm not at all. If you are as a control deck against a ramp deck with all these powerful threats, you don't want to be the one fighting to defend your board. You want to be taking the opponent's board away from them. So it's maintaining the control role. Like you could have tried to be the beat down, but you're naked, basically. You have no counter spell to stop something tragic from happening. So I I a hundred percent endorse this. Yeah, I was I wasn't thinking about like that that um I wasn't. I guess I wasn't taking into account that our hardcast shark typhoon isn't going to be doing as much for us as a result ultimatum will do for the opponent. It is interesting because Prince is literally down to these two cards and a couple scries from an omen, and there is just. There's seven cards waiting in the rings for crows. There's the one saw it coming, and still you have to be afraid of something terrible happening. Yeah, the 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 fear of only having one counter spell in hand here for crows has got to has got to be uh, apparent. And you you're gonna he's gonna want to draw a second counter spell. I think uh, as if a if a uh, if an ultimatum comes down, and you have this card that you've been saving the entire game for ultimatum, and now. K Prince comes uh, comes right back with a counter spell of his own, and you don't have another one to back it up. It could go real bad real quick. Death Touch Birds getting in there. I mean, if you have Ooh, if you have birds, hard. why not give them Death Touch? That's got to be a huge relief to see the land uh, hit the battlefield. Because if like those two cards were both impactful ones, this was a scary turn sequence. Now, not so much. Interestingly, we see the Shadows Verdict come on top here just to clean up the board, save your life total a little bit, and then uh, have two counter spells the next turn with drawing that uh, drawing that salt coming on the next turn. Crows is a true control mage. Just can't turn down the ability <laughs> to kill three creatures with one spell. <laughs> you can't turn it down. Looks like K Prince here is not on much in hand here. Yeah, and that clock is ticking very quickly now, up to eight counters. And we talked about the combo, but I mean, how relevant is this? Because it, in the past, your midnight clock might go off and you might be in a secure position, right? And then you shuffle up and you draw and, oh, there's no counter spell. But being able to foretell saw it coming just changes a lot of the math there on the midnight clock uh, and the valuation of that card. It 
it now you can do it and basically have a nine card hand with two counter spells in reserve. So no matter what you draw, you've got that warm, fuzzy control nope feeling. <laughs> and no one knows that feeling better than you, CGB. I'm starting to think crows might. Crows <laughs> crows here in the finals, like really like really flexing these control muscles. And Crows did a few weeks ago uh, make number one mythic with a Soul Tie control deck. Ah, uh, see, I had to result to some mono white stuff in best of one to do that. So, yeah, I, I have a feeling that Crows might actually be an even grander uh, control mage. You have my respect. You have my attention. Go on. <laughs> Will we see a CGB Crows rivalry? Look at this. I, I mean, more like a, <laughs> at this point, I'm I'm signing up for the apprenticeship. Look at cracking the fabled passage before the clock goes off because the scry doesn't matter anymore, right? I mean, That's very all smart. the little details, yep. all the little things. I love it. And look at the hand. Oh, my. Wow, that's one. Look at that's the hand. eight too many lands. If it weren't for those saw it comings, this would be a disaster. I know. I was about to say the same thing. You have two Salt Cummings in there that didn't get shuffled back, and usually with the Midnight Clock, the, the, your counter spells get shuffled back in your deck as well, and you have to hope that you draw some more. Well, in this case, since you have them foretold, you don't really have to care. And this is just lethal. There's yep. two Salt Cummings to protect the Crawling Barons. There's enough mana wow. to hold it up, and this is GG's. Wow. Get some claps in chat. Get some claps. Master, master class, man. Master class. Wow. Now, I have a at feeling, the though, that... Here. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Prince is not to be outdone. I have a feeling the sideboarding is uh, going to really help the Sultai Mage in this matchup. And Prince is one of the best in the world right now with some amazing top finishes and seems to be a master with this uh, ultimatum deck as well. So we are not out of the woods yet uh, on the Demir side. Oh, no, definitely not. Uh, Christoph Prince is one of the... is is one of the most formidable formidable opponents you can you can play against and we include the MPL players in here. Um, we had a, we had some great competition here in this tournament as well with some MPL players like uh, like um like uh, Chris Kavartek and people like that. Like people, they they were in this tournament and um it'll be awesome to see either Crows or K Prince come out on top here. A current top 4 member of the MPL, Andre Strasky also in the tournament as well. I believe was also playing uh, something close to Demir Control, so maybe it is the hot read right now in the meta. Yeah, and no, that is very notable here that uh, Andre Skrosky did play something similar. Um, I'm pretty sure he was on Sultai, though, and not Demir. Um, but this is a really... Uh, we, we could actually have had, depending on how the matchups went, two Demir Controls in the finals, but it happened to uh, play out that two Demir Controls had to play a mirror match in top four. Can we also add to the storylines? K-Prince's clean sweep is on the line. He went undefeated through the Swiss, marched into this final, and now finds himself a game from elimination. Let the story be told. I, I would be awesome for K-Prince to come back and, and win two, uh, two games in a row here. Starting out with duress on Graven lore, kind of getting an early three-for-one off that single black mana sorcery is a good start. Duress makes such a big difference in these matchups. Now, it doesn't stop Saw it coming when it's foretold, which is very notable and particularly tilting if you're the person playing the Duress. But it does really make a difference in forcing your counter or your hard-to-deal-with threats, your big spells through. Right. Uh, I do really like the the Duress on the Graven Lord, depending on... I mean, it obviously, it does depend on what the opponent's hand is. Um, but I like, in general, if you're going to discard something, discard the card advantage. Notable here that Saw It Coming doesn't get foretold in this spot where you might think it was a good idea. So you see two negates, so you think, is there a creature threat that needs to be countered? And the Gargaroth could have come out of the sideboard. So I, I think saving the Saw It Coming there and not foretelling it and also having Dispute behind it is a pretty good, pretty good play. It does mean I think you have to counter this Duress, but let's see what happens. I, mean, I think if it was me... The only cards that Cape Prince doesn't know about is Mystical Dispute and the land. Um, I would probably... I mean, you have to think about if you use a counterspell, what else could Cape Prince have? I think I would mm -hmm. use Negate here. 
Yeah, for three mana, there isn't a ton of punishment. So negate to defend the information, defend the hand, knowing it's probably going to take something like Saw It coming anyway. Your chariot awaits. Have a negate. <laughs> Your chariot awaits. Now we have three mana available here to maybe hard, maybe a kind of hard mystical dispute, an Elder Gargaroth or a um, or Vorinclex. Mm hmm. And we see we see crows here keeping an extinction event in the deck um, on the draw to maybe protect against uh, some of some of the eight eight hex proofs of the world or even the Vorinclex. I was going to say it's a pretty interesting card to keep in, but it is more of a universal answer. It could definitely come up. I, um, when when I play this matchup, um, and if I'm playing Demir Control, I would keep one Extinction Event in, and I have throughout the matches that I've played on stream. Um, it's just knowing sometimes when the, your opponent resolves something like a QR Best of Sea God, and you not have, and knowing that you don't have an answer to the eight eight, could make you concede the game sometimes. But know, knowing that you have the Extinction Event in the deck somewhere that you can draw to in order to have a chance actually, I think, makes a big difference on how you play the matchup. Very in, like, these Cultivates are interesting because on one hand, you're happy that they're not some of the larger spells. Like, we're getting some of the cards out onto the battlefield and we're learning more about K Prince's hand. But on the other hand, they outscale that mystical dispute that's sitting there now facing so much mana. Yeah, usually this mystical dispute would be fine on turn like five or six of the game, but because two cultivates have come down, it's going to make it a lot harder. And this other rant spell in Willful Haven, it's going to be a lot harder to resolve this. What I think is the best use for mystical dispute is to get into some kind of counterspell war and just use mystical dispute as the last spell. Since the shark that was made last turn is a 4-4, four, four, this does pr prompt the Yorian to hit the battlefield, even though it's almost a sad Yorian. You can blink this Wolf Willow Haven, bring it back onto an untapped land, basically saving yourself a mana. But that's not the best Yorian in the world, and smelling blood in the water, Crows, is making another shark, this one larger than the Yorian. Now, if K Prince didn't have enough removal spells post-board... We could see Crows win the game outright in a couple turns. And look at this. An aggressive extinction event is going to exile the wow. lovely, beautiful Yorian. And just like that, animal. we could have a game here. This is tr this is triple counter backing up a lethal board. And it it just it might it looks like it's wow, just done. Just, just smelling blood in the water here. Double mystical dispute in hand after the duress. Crows is saying, come at me with your removal spells. Yeah, uh, read them and weep. Uh, hold your breath. Hold your breath, chat. Since you have hold your anything breath, up is your sleeve. Is there an answer here? This game has gotten real ugly all of a sudden in the past couple turns. And it yeah, does, pre does really feel like all of a sudden. Yeah, pre-board, you'd be thinking, Heartless Act, Eliminate. They're not just going to get in there. Surely with three cards, there's removal spells. But post-board, are those cards there? It's another land. It's Emergent oh, Ultimatum. We go. Could this be it? Could we have a winner of Stream League number two? Wow, and Crows takes it 2-0. Wow. wow. Diminishing K Prince's undefeated run into the finals. Wow. It, the game I'm, can go uh, that quickly sometimes. Uh, yeah, I'm blown away. What a, what a master class in control. Big congrats to Crows. Uh, definitely thank you very much for playing out here for the content. It was a joy to watch. And congratulations, you are the Stream League champion. Now, Crows gets $500 to the charity of his choice. Um, and Crows doesn't leave with nothing. Crows gets $200 as well. Store credit to Cool Stuff, uh, CoolStuffInc.com. And let's go ahead and get Crows into the into the uh, winner's interview. This will be the the third time we're interviewing Crows. This is insane. Send him, he just send him my love. Keeps winning. I will send you. I will send you Crows' love, CGP. <laughs> Crows, can you believe it? Well, 
we can't currently see crows right now is in a bunch of green um which is a really weird here uh it's gonna hopefully it fixes itself in a second here but crows talk to me here what was going through your mind when on the last a couple turns of the game where it seemed like you kind of won the game out of nowhere uh that last game yeah 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 i mean i got really lucky top decking in the gate at one point and then i when i saw that second shark i knew that if i found a land i would be a two-turn clock so i got i don't know i got really good draws so kind of worked out but yeah it is a good matchup for me so uh, now, that. now that well, that's a good matchup. Now we had we had some very very good um, good words of affirmation here from Covert Go Blue here in the in the in the in the, uh, in the commentator room here. Uh, so uh, if you will, um, he said maybe maybe he shouldn't have a rivalry with you. Maybe he just should just be your apprentice. You you <laughs> masterful uh, Gandalf work here. Um, talk about your deck choice and what made you choose this to take down all these 31 other players in stream league number two. Yeah. I mean, the deck choice is, I mean, kind of weird. I, you know, I woke up Saturday morning, you know, yesterday and I was like, all right, well, I'm kind of bored. I'm just going to build like a, cause I was playing this, is it control deck? That was pretty bad. And then people told me, you know, I should play the mirror, play the mirror. And I was like, all right. So I built the Demir and I played like three matches. I'm like, okay, this feels pretty nice. Then I entered the Altiora 2K Open tournament. Got ninth place in that. Got ninth place in that. Uh, place in that. And yeah, uh, I was like, all right, I'm definitely bringing this to Stream League because it's a lot of fun to play. I don't know, just it just feels refreshing to play like a pure Demir control deck with not that many win cons, but you know, very powerful ones like Crawling Baron, Sanugan, Shark Typhoon. Now, one of the one of the questions that I had, especially in my own experience by playing Demir Control like that, is that um, sometimes you can't get rid of a result, a really powerful resolved card, like um, like a hard cast Shark Typhoon or a or a um, uh, the card that Cycling plays that just makes a whole bunch of one one flyers. Um, what yep. what is going through your mind with not like splashing green for for a Binding of the Old Gods or something like that? Yeah, well. Yeah, at first I was actually running Soul Tide Control a while back uh, at the start of the meta, but the thing is, if you streamline if you streamline a deck to two colors, it usually uh, functions a lot better. So you can like curve out spells uh, a lot easier. You have like a tighter mana base. Um, also, it allows me to play Snow, so I get access to the the craziness that is Graven Lore. Like that that card is absolutely nuts. So yeah, even though I can't really deal with those permanents, um, just having both Ugins there as like a um a reset a board reset if it resolves is kind of just perfect so I, I didn't feel like the splash was necessary i just feel like you know i can rely on that ugin and try to get the get the job done with him uh speaking of you uh playing soul tie before and switching to demir now um i want to ask you about how this tournament went for you as well it's, even in the swiss rounds today what was your hardest yeah, I mean... matchup today <laughs> uh I mean, my only loss was to a uh, sixty-card Soltai Ultimatum deck that kind of caught me off guard, and I, I wasn't I wasn't warmed up too, so I did end up making a mistake. But uh, I think the hardest matchup was probably just a uh, Demir Control Mirror against Dean or against um, I think it was Thomas uh, earlier, and um, those matchups are usually the hardest. I think because I have to sequence things pretty much perfectly to win the game because we're both playing pretty much the same deck. But yeah, other than that, I did face mostly favorable matchups, so couldn't have asked for more. Uh, would you consider a favorable matchup to be like the mono reds and the mono whites, or a favorable matchup to be yeah, um, the Soul sure. Ultimatum deck? I mean, the thing with Demir Control is it's it's kind of funny. It has like good matchups against everything. Uh, Cycling might just be the only deck that can threaten it at a certain level, just because Alliance is really brutal. But um, I think all the matchups are close to 50-50, if not slightly favored for Demir, because like there's, there's so much, you know, there are so many answers in that deck between the counters and the efficient removal, the sweepers. You kind of have game against everything, so it's kind of nice. And then you have Graven Through Time or, you know, a Dig lore, Through yeah. Lore, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, um, whatever, we, yeah. we talked about it um, when you were resolving that card one time that it's basically Dig Through Time, right? You scry three or, you know, at least, you know, scry three, scry five, scry whatever, how many, uh, you know, snowman you have available at the time and draw three cards. Now... 
was there a point in time in where you feel like you could you would have lost a game without that card? Oh, for sure. But I'm telling you, Graven Lore is the reason to play this deck. <laughs> I mean, uh, that card has saved me so many times. It's it's really propelled me forward. Like when I get a slight advantage, that card just pushes you like all the way through. Like you get you get so much advantage with that because you get exactly the cards you need. And you draw three, so it's like so much card advantage and card selection that usually you can push your advantage really hard with it. I don't know, it just feels amazing. It's such a great card. Yeah, the, the only spot that I think it's probably not ideal is if you're being beaten down by a bunch of mono red or mono white cards. Yeah, yeah it, it can be it can be a bit expensive at times, but you know, in those matchups you kind of just board it out and you just play Tome instead. So I mean, yeah, the main deck's more more tuned for like a variety of matchups and then post board you can just you know take out the grave and lore if you need if you need to or you know keep it in if you're facing another control deck so well congratulations on winning stream league number two sponsored by coolstuffinc.com enjoy your 500 dollars to the charity of your choice and uh 200 goes to second place 150 goes to third place 100 goes to uh fourth place uh fifth place gets 50 and then the rest 6th, 7th, and 8th place have a guaranteed spot in the next Stream League. Thank you very much, Crows, for playing in the event and for taking everyone down with Demir Control. And we had some formidable opponents in this tournament. So you now are crowned the new Stream League champion. Thanks for playing. Thanks so much. Thanks for organizing everything. It was a great time. All right. We'll see you next time. All right. CGB. What an awesome tournament. What an awesome tournament, CGB. What thoughts do you have about how the tournament unfolded at the end there? The cycle of the metagame continues to rotate. Yesterday I saw the cycling deck, pun completely set up by myself, you're welcome, uh, just absolutely sawing through everything, and today it came all the way back around. At the end of that tournament yesterday, it was mono red aggro. The aggro decks were good again. Now Demir control, like at one minute control is playable. One minute it's taken the next it's taken down the tournament. It, this is the meta that I think we all wanted. And the reason that we wanted some of those overpowered format defining cards to be banned. And now we have it. And I'm just, I'm really excited for every weekend now to see what the best players are playing. It's awesome. Oh yeah. Um, th it's it, like if people think of it as a triangle format, right? You have this, you have this deck, and you have this beats this deck, and you have Naya one week, and then the next week something else. It it kind of comes together so fast. Um, all all of the uh, especially being on on MTG Arena with you know millions of matches being played per day, we have cycling at getting a sixty percent plus win percentage, even seventy percent in some matches. We don't see cycling at any. We saw maybe one cycling deck in the top eight here, and we had mm -hmm. two Demir controls, which might even be a a a good matchup for cycling, but we saw yeah, the Demir control decks one. take out all the adventure decks. Um, we didn't yeah. even see adventure in the, we did we see one adventure list in the top four at all. We saw one, yep. right? Talia, Talia had the adventure list that made it to the top four. And that wasn't a typical adventure. That was a squirrel deck, you know? So it was nuts. Absolutely nuts. Wow. Um, well, thank you everybody for enjoying this time in the in the stream league for us folks stream league number two sponsored by coolstuffinc.com it was a pleasure having you folks and we'll see you next time congratulations to the top eight but most of all congratulations to crows for winning first place five hundred dollars to the charity of crows choice with demir control have a wonderful rest of your night folks I will be, I will currently be, I don't know if, if Scover Go Blue is streaming after this. I will be currently uh, doing my Streamcast podcast after this. So make sure to stay around if you'd like. And thank you everybody for hanging out tonight with Stream League number two.